This After Effects tutorial is sponsored by AEJuice.com. In this video, I'm going to share with you 10 After Effects tips and tricks that will not only help you become better at After Effects but will also improve your overall workflow and save you a lot of time. I'm Nikhil from DopeMotions.com and without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so here we are in After Effects and the first tip that I have for you is how to create perfect drop shadows in After Effects. Now there is a default uh, effect in After Effects that is drop shadow, which I hardly use right now because um, if I go into effects and preset, let's type in a drop shadow. All right, double click to apply. And it's nice, it's good. But when you want a bit more control over your drop shadow, it's going to be difficult to control this drop shadow because we don't have much options here. So what I recommend you is delete that drop shadow right off the bat, right click and then go into layer styles and then use this drop shadow. Now, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you remember we have layer styles in Photoshop. Similar way we have layer styles in After Effects as well. So use this drop shadow. Now if I go into my drop shadow, you can see we have a bit more options and a bit more control over this. First we have the blending mode. So you can select whichever blending mode that you want. I like to, I prefer going with multiply or normal mode. Uh, you can choose the color. So I'll hit control shift H just so we can hide the control layers and you can see what's happening here. So I can bring up or bring down the opacity, right? We have the global light on off, which doesn't really matter. We have angle, we have distance, spread, we have size, which is very important. But most importantly, we have noise. So we can bring down the noise, we can increase the noise to get a very interesting grungy look. But what I like to do is keep the noise at around 3%, which is going to help us to avoid any kind of color bendings that we may get while doing the render. So this comes in very handy and as you can see, the drop shadow looks much more appealing, very subtle and very smooth and you can create some very nice neomorphism look using this drop shadow. So I hope this helps. The second tip that I have for you is center shape layers anchor point. Now if I go ahead and create a shape layer, so let's say I'll create a shape layer just like so. You can see the anchor point of this shape layer, if I select it, it's not in the center. The anchor point is in the center of the composition and not the shape layer. So if I turn on the collapse transform, so if I turn on the title action save, you can see the anchor point is in the center of the comp and not of the shape layer basically, right? Let's see if I delete the shape, if I create a shape, maybe somewhere right over here, still the anchor point is in the center of the composition and not of the shape layer. If I hit R and rotate it, it can come in handy for creating particular kind of animation, but I always like my anchor point to be in the center. Now, one way to fix this is by holding control and double clicking on the pan behind tool. And basically it's going to fix this. Now you can see the anchor point is in the center of the shape layer. So that's that. But if you have multiple different shape layers, it can be a bit annoying to every time hold control and double click on the pan behind tool. So what if I want to keep it as default? So to do that, I can go into edit preferences general. And in the general, we get an option which says center anchor point in the new shape layer. So I'll turn that on, click on okay. And then whenever I create a shape layer, you can see the anchor point always remains in the center of that shape layer. So no matter how many shape layer I create, the anchor point is always going to be into the center. The third tip that I have for you is scaling the animation timings. So here I have a pretty nice and simple animation, text animation basically. If I select the layer and hit U, we can see we have number of different keyframes for creating this particular animation. So right now the animation ends at around two seconds and 15 frames. Now let's say if I want to make the animation last for around four seconds. Now you can obviously go ahead and tweak each and every keyframe, but an easy way to do this is select all the keyframes, hold alt and then select the last keyframe that we have and then pull it. And you can see all the keyframes are gonna stretch accordingly. So I can place it at around four seconds. Now the animation is gonna 
animate at around four seconds and as you can see the animation is quite slow if i want to change this to one second i can simply hold alt again select the last keyframe and pull that to around one second and now we have a faster animation pretty snappy and quick so this way you can change the timing or scale the timing of the animation the next tip that i have for you is solo select properties so if i simply click on this down arrow you can see we get number of different properties for this particular shape now let's say i only want to see some particular properties in order to animate them because right now here we have number of different properties so what i'm going to do is hold control and let's say i want to see the position of the ellipse i want to see the color of the stroke i want to see maybe the color of the fill as well i want to see the position and a scale of the transform eclipse so basically whichever property that i want to see i want to select that and then hit s two times and boom only those property are going to be visible and then i can you know simply animate them or tweak them i don't want to i don't need to go again and again into all the properties here search them you know it saves a hell a lot of time animating the next tip that I have for you is timeline search bar. So as you can see right over here, we have a search bar. So in order to search anything, I can select any layer. So let's say if I want to search position of this layer, I can simply hit type in POS and there we go position. I can hit comma and then I can hit ROT. So we have position and rotation. If I want scale, I can hit comma scale and boom, there we have it. If I don't, I can easily also browse anything from here. So if I want to search color of this property, I can just simply hit on color, but text property doesn't has color. So we have a shape layer for that. And if I do not select any layer, it's going to show the position. So let's say if I type in P, it's going to show position of every position property there in that particular composition. So we have position for ellipse, we have position for fill. Uh, transform eclipse we have position for the transform as well so basically it's gonna help you searching for the properties if i want to select property of if i want to search property of any particular layer i can just select them and then i type in here so it's gonna preview oh it's gonna preview for only that particular layer the next tip that i have for you is edit guide position so let's say i'll hit ctrl r to bring up the rulers and then if i drag my guide now let's see if i want to place the guide at around properly at uh 200 pixels so what i can do is maybe i'll just leave it right here right click and then click on edit position and then type in 200 so it's gonna properly snap at 200 same way let's say if i want to set this to 200 i can drag this out right click go into edit position and set this to 200 this way you can be a lot more precise while working with your animation so i can just maybe drag this one right click and maybe i want to set that at 700 i can type in 700 hit enter and boom you can be precise as hell now before we proceed further with this tutorial, let me tell you about today's sponsor AE Juice. They have an amazing I want it all bundle which contains over 5000 animated elements like transitions, presets, titles for your project. It comes with a handy pack manager plugin and this is one of those investments that will last you for a lifetime. Plus they also have a starter pack which has over 100 animations that you can try it out for free. For more information, check out the link in the description below. The next tip that I have for you is crop comps. So right now here I have a simple text and let's say I want to change the size of this composition to stay at the size of this text. Now you can obviously hit control K and manually change everything, but it's going to take some time to figure out the exact um, length of this text, right? It's going to take a few seconds basically but what you can do is rather i can select this icon that says region of interest select that and draw a region of interest just like so you can anytime just simply adjust this like that and then go into composition and there you get an option which says crop com to region of interest so simply click on that and now boom your composition size is changed to the region of interest that you selected if you don't want the selection you can do the selection again you can hit ctrl z i can again select this maybe i want only this section i can simply select it go into composition crop com to region of interest and boom there we go super useful and super helpful 
In this tip, I'm going to show you how to mask shape layers. Now, if you have a shape layer here and if you try to mask it, if I select maybe a ellipse tool again and try to mask it, it's going to create another shape layer. So how you mask this particular shape layer? Well, you get a small icon right here, which says tool create mask. You need to select that and then you can simply create a mask on that shape layer. And this will help you to actually create a really unique and complex shape inside of your composition. Very simple and handy. The next tip that I have for you is moving the layers to playhead or trimming the layers. So here I have three layers as you can see. Now if I want to go to one second and bring these three layers at one second, if you try to do it manually, you can hold shift and you know, do it like this. But let's say if you have more than 100 layers, what you're going to do? Yeah. So all you have to do is select the layers and click on open square bracket or left square bracket. Boom. There we go. Same if you want to do that at the right side, you go right over here, make sure all the layers are selected and click on close square bracket or right bracket. Boom. Pretty simple and easy. Now, if you want to trim the composition, let's say if I want to go to one second, I'll first of all move this comb and then I want to crop this comb or trim this comb at two second. What I have to do is hold alt and close square bracket or right square bracket and it's going to crop that pretty simple and easy. And the final tip that I have for you is offsetting the layers. Right now here I have a simple animation of these squares. Now if I want to offset these layers by 10 frames, what I can do is move my playhead to 10 frames, select all the layers, hold alt and close square bracket or right square bracket crop them up then I can select the first layer and then hold shift and select the fifth layer go into animation keyframe assistant and sequence layers click on ok and boom there we go now I can drag this layers and now if I preview the animation we have offset the animation pretty nicely now if you want the reverse of that I can hit ctrl z then make sure to select the first layer or the top layer first and then the bottom layer by holding shift go into animation keyframe assistant and sequence layers hit OK and boom there we go. So this way you can easily offset your animation and make a really interesting look. So those were the 10 tips and tricks that I think can be super helpful for you guys and if you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comment section below. I read each and every comment so make sure you comment down below and you can follow me on Instagram at dope.motions. I'm super active there. And that is a wrap for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you guys in the next video. Till then, take care and always stay raw, stay creative. Peace out.